Hello all, in this video session we will be discussing about sequential access files and random access files. Okay. So we know about sequential access which means that we have to access all the previous content before getting to the required content whereas random access we can access the required content randomly. Okay, so that you already know. Uh, then in files we will be learning about sequential access files and random access files. Okay, a simple example for sequential access files are text files. Again, uh, here when we say about accessing, we are saying about accessing a particular record. Okay, because using fseq you can randomly go to any location in text files as well as in binary files. Okay, so we are just saying sequential access files in terms of records. Okay, records or lines. Okay, so just consider this example. So this is a file storing details of a student and we are storing roll number and name. So each line will be containing a roll number and name. And this roll number and name is separated by a horizontal tab and then the records are separated by this new line character. Okay, so in this file, consider that is this file is student.txt. So we will be storing roll number, then horizontal tab, then name, then new line character, then after that the details of next record and next record and so on. Okay. So if we consider here one record contains roll number and name, then the records are of different size, right? The records are of variable length. So here first record is 6 bytes, second is 8 bytes and third is 9 bytes. So usually when we write code to identify end of record, we will be using this new line character. So if you are using some function like fgets or fscanf, we can extract the first line and if you are using fscanf, we can se separate roll number and name. And consider that you want to go to the third record. Okay, if this is record 1, record 2 and this is third record, then you don't know the place where the third record is. Okay, so the size is not fixed, so we doesn't know where the third record begins. Okay, so these are the locations. These addresses are relative to the beginning of the file that is seek set. So from the beginning of the file, so this is at the zeroth location, this is at the first location, second location and so on. Okay. So in order to get to the third record we have to come to the 14th position but since the size is of variable length we cannot uh, find out the length. So in that case we will just read the first line then we will read the second line and then we will read the third line. So we will be sequentially accessing the records till the nth record or the third record is found. Okay. Because we are accessing the records sequentially to get to the required record, this type of access is called, but this type of files are called sequential access files. Okay. Then one more thing here. If you observe here, we are only allocating the space for the actual content. So consider that in the future we want to modify this particular record. Okay. So if we modify this record and if the roll number or name have one more character than previously written one, then it may corrupt the file. Okay. For example, I consider that I am changing this name from Devi to Arena then it will modify like this okay so it will write a r e e n a so it will overwrite this particular character thus next time when we read the record this orange colored portion and uh, green colored portion will be interpreted as one record by the compiler okay so modifying previously written record may corrupt the file so that is another uh, disadvantage when we are using this sequential access files or text files. So we are just explaining it in terms of text files. Text file which is containing records. Records means a uh, roll number and name. So these are all represented as ASCII codes. Okay. So these are the few things that you have to keep in mind. And the next one is random access files. So in case of random access files, usually we'll be using some types like structures. So here I have used 
a structure student and consider that it is of size 12 bytes so 4 bytes is for the roll number and 8 bytes is for the name so usually size of name will be like 32 bytes so just for simplicity I have just reduced the size but remember that the size of the name would be usually like 32 bytes or much higher than that for simplicity I have just uh, given the size as 8 bytes so each record will be having 12 bytes so as I have said each record will be having roll number and name and each record are of fixed length that is 12 bytes okay so since the 0th record is at location 0 and it is of fixed size 12 the next record will be at location 12 and the next location will be at location 12 into 2 that is 24 okay so we know that the first record will be at location 0 and since it starts from 0 so to get to the nth record we can just use the fseek function so this is a file pointer then this is the reference point that is at the beginning of the file seek underscore set which you did not see beginning of the file then move this much bytes that is record number minus 1 into size of struct student okay so here the first location the value will be 0 and then from there onwards we have to add 12 okay so that's why here record number minus 1 is given so if we if we want to access record 2 we just need to give 2 minus 1 into 12 and if you want to access the record number 3 then we can give here 3 minus 1 into 12 that is 24 okay so that's how the binary files are accessed so since they are of fixed size nth record can be randomly accessed using this fseek function okay now here also since we are uh, providing equal length for every record we can most of the times modifying the previously written record will work fine okay so if I am modifying this roll number 13 from Devi to Arena then it will work okay so here I have only provided 8 spaces for the name usually it will be much higher than 30 bytes so there won't be any issue modifying the previously written record okay so since the size is fixed sometimes it may increase the size of the file then again if we are writing in some values like integer float then those float representations will take less value if we are writing it as bytes but it may take more space if we are writing as text files because if we have a eight digit number usually this eight digit number will take eight spaces in text files since each digit will take one byte but whereas in uh, we are writing it to a binary file it will only take four bytes okay so just remember about that then text files can be made as a random access file if they are formatted in fixed length okay that modifications are possible but for the simplicity we are just considering this text files as sequential access files and binary files as random access files okay thank you